Hello from the Chueti Studio team and welcome to Obsidian Protocol. In this video, we will demonstrate the basic rules of the game with a three round combat demo. All mech components shown in the video are included in the core set, and we won't use advanced mechanics like ECM or optical camouflage. And while we will be using a standard grid based movement rules today, the game fully supports free movements for players that prefer it. Note that everything you see in this video, card text, game mechanics, everything, is a work in progress and subject to change before release. We'd also like to point out the official release will ship with gray models, as shown on unit and component cards. All right, let's begin. Before starting the game, players must prepare for the match according to the chosen scenario, including board setup, win conditions, and deployment points for each side. Once you get a feel for the game, we encourage you to run maps and missions of your own. In this video, we will be using the most basic elimination rule set, and each player will have only 120 deployment points to build their squad. Deployment points represent the raw resources each commander is given in order to accomplish their objectives, essentially. Your budget for the battle. In Obsidian Protocol, deployment points can be spent to purchase the mech components, drones, and pilots that make up your squad. Each mech consists of five components, trunk, lower limbs, left arm, right arm, and backpack. Every component gives unique abilities to your mech, as shown on component cards like these. To assemble a mech, simply insert your chosen component cards into the corresponding section of the control panel. That's it. Even the coolest mech is useless without a pilot, so each one must be given a pilot dial. Trainee pilots are free while skilled elite pilots require deployment points to use. In this game, both sides have 120 deployment points to work with. We assemble the low-cost mech for Player 1's squad to free up deployment points for a drone, while Player 2's mech will get an elite pilot. Move the pilot dials and control panels to each player's side. Place all mechs in the deployment area, and the game can begin. Player 1 is commanding the squad fighting for a Reconstruction League faction, while Player 2 is fielding a United Network squad. The first phase in each round is Drone Order Phase. In this phase, each player can issue orders to a number of drones equal to the number of active mechs on their side. One pilot, one drone order. Easy. Currently, there's only one drone in Player 1's squad, and it doesn't have any special order actions it can take, only an automatic action. The player can choose to issue an order move, allowing it to move up to a number of spaces equal to its mobility stat, which is highlighted in blue. Let's order this drone to move forward two spaces. Now that all the drones have received their orders, the next phase begins. The second phase of each round is the planning phase, during which players choose the step when each mech will act. Let's take a look at their component decks and see how players decide on a step. This is the deck for Player 1's mech. All actions they can perform in the next phase are highlighted in gray. Every action performs a task like attacking or maneuvering, and most actions can only take place at a certain step in the main action phase. Player 1 wants their mech to execute a sprinting maneuver action, so they secretly set their pilot dial to 6. This is the deck for Player 2's mech. As you can see, they have a variety of actions available, but we won't use them in this round. Player 2 also wants to execute a sprinting maneuver and sets their pilot dial to 6. The players have set every pilot dial, so the planning phase ends. At the beginning of the main action phase, both players reveal their dials, then execute actions in ascending step order. Step 1 acts first, then 2, and so forth. In this round, both pilots will act at step 6, and the pilot with the higher link value will go first. Player 2's elite pilot gets the initiative. Before taking action, Player 2 declares a quick step, a special movement action any mobile mech without heavy equipment can perform, that uses a blue die to get a little extra distance. One walk symbol lets the mech move a single space. Player 2 now declares a sprinting action, this allows the mech to move up two spaces plus one blue die, so we need to roll again. The die comes up with one boost symbol and one overload symbol. The boost symbol lets the mech move two extra spaces, 
while the overload symbol generates one heat token, whether the mech uses those moves or not. Player 2 moves their mech four spaces, faces it towards the enemy, and places one heat token on its trunk component. Player 2's action is complete. Now it's Player 1's turn. Player 1 also declares a maneuver, but rolls a lightning symbol and can't move. They then declare a sprinting action, rolling better this time, allowing them to move three spaces behind a wall and face the enemy. Now that both players have executed their actions, the main action phase ends. Next up is the drone action phase. The only drone in play has an automatic seek and destroy action, but since there are no enemy targets within four spaces, the phase ends. The post action phase involves battlefield objects like missiles, among other things, as there isn't anything like that on the board yet. We'll move on. During the end phase, one heat token is removed from every mech as they slowly cool down. Now the first round is over, and the next one begins. Player 1 orders their drone to move towards the opponent, but as drones must spend two movement spaces to climb onto full high terrain, they can only move one space. Player 1 expects their opponent to press further forward, and chooses to act in step 2 to launch a missile. Player 2 wants to move again, and chooses step 6. Both sides reveal their pilot dials. Player 1 acts first and declares a quick step, but rolls a lightning symbol and doesn't move. They then declare the missile launching action from the backpack component. Because of the Volley 2 keyword, they can launch up to two missiles at a total cost of two ammo. Missiles are projectile weapons governed by a special set of rules. After being launched, they move during the post-action phase and can be targeted by enemy fire or ECM. Next, player two takes action. As they have a more melee-oriented mech, they decide not to fire at the incoming missiles and instead push forward into melee range. They first declare a quick step rolling two spaces and one heat token. They declare a sprint action rolling two extra spaces and one heat token for a total of four spaces. Let's take a look at their component deck. The mech has three actions available that takes place at step plus. These so-called additional actions can be executed after the mech's primary action, but only one can be performed per turn. Player 2 could use an additional action to shoot down a missile or attack the opponent's drone, but their mech is suffering from significant heat buildup. To avoid potential overheating from using either arm's pulse shot, they choose to fire an M9 flashbang grenade instead. Unlike missiles, grenade takes effect instantly and can't be shot down. The flashbang places one disruption token on the opponent's mech and drone. During this round's drone action phase, the drone would normally execute an automatic firing action. But drones with disruption tokens on them can't act. During the post-action phase, both missiles move three spaces towards their target. Let's resolve this impact first. When faced with a missile strike, the defending mech may choose to dodge or defend. Player 2 opts to defend. As the mech has five intact components, they roll five base defense dice. Player 2 decides to activate the energy shield from the backpack, spending one ammo to gain one additional defense die for a total of six. Next, we roll to determine the targeted component. This result means either the trunk or backpack. But because the missile is coming from the side, the trunk is automatically targeted. The attacker rolls five orange dice as listed on the card. On attack dice, numbers determine damage. Overload symbols cause armor piercing, which removes one defense die. And disruption symbols inflict a point of disruption on the target. The total is 4 damage, 1 armor piercing, and 3 disruption. On defense dice, each square symbol provides 1 point of defense. The other symbols don't matter right now, so that's 2 defense total. 
player one uses one point of armor piercing to remove the two defense die, completely nullifying player two's defenses. The trunk has four armor points to absorb the impact. The total damage is four, which penetrates the trunk's armor. One more damage token and the mech will be destroyed. Furthermore, player two's pilot absorbs three points of disruption. If the disruption exceeds her link value, she will enter failsafe mode, which can be fatal in one-on-one -on -one combat. The situation is dire, and there's still another missile to contend with. As the second missile is coming from behind, player two can only choose to dodge. When dodging, mechs use mobility dice, usually from the lower limbs. In this case, that's two green dice. Player 2 rolls for the targeted component, getting lower limbs. Player 1 throws 5 orange dice again. And Player 2 throws 2 green dice. Player 2 rolls 2 boost symbols and 1 overload symbol. When dodging, each boost symbol removes 1 attack die and overload symbols have no effect. So they can remove the 2 highest damage attack dice. That's good news. The remaining dice shows 1 attack damage and 1 disruption. The damage doesn't exceed the lower limb's armor, so they're safe for now. But the mech must still take a disruption token. The post-action phase ends, and the end phase begins. One heat token is removed from player 2's mech. Player 1 flips two yellow tokens red side up, and the second round ends. At the beginning of the third round, player 1 orders the drone to pull back slightly, and the planning phase starts. Player 1 decides to keep their distance for now. Considering that their drone will be able to fire next round, they choose to act in step 6 and prepare to use a sprinting action. While Player 2's mech has suffered some damage, the enemy mech is already in attack range. Their arms have firing actions at step X and step plus, so they can fire at any timing. They choose step 1, hoping that their opponent didn't do the same since their pilot's LV Lowered by disruption, won't be high enough to give them the initiative. Player 2 now acts at timing 1, declaring a quick step that advances their mech 1 space, then declares a fire action. Their right arms pulse shot against player 1's mech. Player 1 chooses to defend. Due to nearby cover, player 2 gains 1 extra defense die for a total of 6. Player 2 rolls to determine the targeted component and gets the right arm. Dice throw. Player 2 didn't deal enough damage to pierce the component's armor, but since they fired within 3 spaces, Player 2's can't activate the pilot's CQS skill and re-roll 1 attack die. They choose to re-roll the 2 damage die. This penetrates the armor of the enemy's right arm, destroying it. Player 2 declares an additional action, this time using the left arm's pulse shot to attack the enemy's mech again. Player 1 once again chooses to defend, but only gets 4 base defense dice due to losing one arm. One die is added from the terrain cover for a total of 5. Player 2 rolls to determine the targeted component. Once again, they get the right arm, but since it was just destroyed, the attack goes straight to the trunk. Player 1 rolls 5 white dice, and Player 2 rolls 5 orange dice. Impressive results on both sides, but Player 2's attack causes their mech to overheat. After some deliberation, they choose not to re-roll a damage die, and damage resolution continues. Three overload symbols remove one defense dice each, leaving two defense. The attacker rolls nine damage and one disruption. Nine minus two equals seven, which is higher than the trunk's armor value, so the attack penetrates it. This attack also generated three heat tokens. With one token already there, the mech goes one point overheat capacity. Now player two must roll one orange die to see if the overheated component suffers any heat damage. As the damage is lower than the component's strength, the arm isn't destroyed, but the mech still takes one disruption token. All remaining heat tokens stay on the control panel. Player 1's action has ended. Let's see Player 2 act on step 6. Player 2's mech has lost its assault rifle, but still has a melee weapon on its left arm, and two missiles in its backpack. 
Player 2 decides that a melee attack would be best, and declares a quick step with hopes of getting close enough to attack. Player 2 rolls well and advances into melee range. Next, Player 2 declares a shield bash with the left arm melee weapon. Mechs can't use the defense reaction against melee strikes, and can only dodge or parry with the proper components. Player 2 chooses to parry with their left arm. According to the card, they get two white parry dice, and the melee attack will automatically strike it. When parrying, every parry symbol removes one attack die. Due to the shock keyword trait of shield strike, all lightning symbols on attack dice inflict two extra disruption tokens. Now player 2 has to make a choice. If they choose to remove the 4 damage die, then their mech will be left defenseless in failsafe mode, while removing the disruption die will mean sacrificing its right arm. Player 2 decides to remove the orange die. So no disruption occurs and the right arm is destroyed. The third turn's main action phase ends. The drone is still affected by disruption, so this phase is skipped. At the end phase, all red tokens are removed. A heat token is also removed from player 2's mech. So that's the first three rounds of a small game of Obsidian Protocol. If you want to learn more about the game as it develops, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Kickstarter. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this about the evolving world of Obsidian Protocol. Thank you.